G'day. Today we're doing a little bit of work on a Holden Barina 2009 model 1.6 litre engine. What's happening, uh, there's a funny noise that sounds like it's in the left hand side. If I drive along under load there's a noise. If I coast in neutral the noise is still there. So by doing that test, sometimes if, it, if it's under load, it's usually like a CV joint or something like that. If it's uh, constantly there, like even when you put it into neutral and let it coast, and the noise is there, it usually indicates that it's like a bearing noise. And we've also gone to a, uh, an empty car park and driven it full lock to the left and full lock to the right just to try and see if there are any noises in the CV uh, in the CV shafts if they're worn quite often steering wheel all the way to one side either left or right can indicate which side is worn or making a, a noise or an issue we've got it jacked up on our scissor lift there and now we're going to actually drive it on the hoist. I'm going to have a listen with our stethoscope. We're just going to touch over here, over here where the bearings run and the CV shaft runs in there and over here and I'll have a listen if there's any grumbling noises or it should have a nice shh sort of sound. If you don't have a stethoscope some people just put a, a long screwdriver and put their ear to the screwdriver. Rightio, start her up. Yeah, you can see that CV joint looks like it's out of balance. Too bad, but this one's right out of whack. Okay. A little bit noisy in there. So it looks like this CV is either, it's either worn too much in there and causing that vibration or they've hit the shaft on something and bent it. Uh, that wheel bearing there looks okay. This shaft here looks to be running nice and straight but the wheel bearing over here is real grumbly and noisy. So we'll do a transmission service on it, that's why they've booked it in. Um, this one's actually got a sump on it, the U440E transmission. The other version or the other type of transmission they don't have a sump on it. The filter's internal, you've got to pull the transmission apart to replace the filter. But fortunately on this one we've got a pan and we can get to the filter in there. So they have a little drain plug here you can let the oil out or you can suck it out through the dipstick. To get access to that you've got to remove this little little bar here. You can just take these two out and just pivot pivot that bar out of the way just so you've got enough room here. That way you don't have to loosen that. It's a good idea to just mark the outside of that to put it so you know where to put it. Uh, sometimes it can affect the the wheel alignment or you can just have a good 
take a good notice of uh, where it sits. There'll be a witness mark when you take it off. But it's a good idea to just, just run a screwdriver along there and that'll mark exactly where it was. There we go, we can see the mark there. And these are 17 mil. There you go, you got a bit of access there. And we've got three bolts on the filter there. Just be aware this one is worn, so when you're dropping the filter, you'll get an airlock in there, you'll get a surge of oil coming out. Even if it's cold, it'll, it might get all over you if you're doing it on the ground. And in the pan, you can see that there's just those little weak factory magnets, and there is quite a bit of metallic swarf there. So what happens, once that magnet's covered in that muck, it doesn't work anymore. And, all, and then all this gets attracted to your solenoids and your sensors in the transmission, which control all the shifts and pressures in there. So it's a good idea to do a regular service, filter service, not just an oil change. The idea is to clean these magnets. And we're going to add neodymium magnets in this transmission as well. So we've got a nice clean pan, just make sure the bolt holes on the pan rail on, on the pan are flat. You don't want them sort of pushing up. If they're pushing up, you need to knock them back down, otherwise it can cut into the gasket. The magnets as per usual, we like to leave them up on these little ridges just to expose more surface area of the magnet to collect more rubbish. We're going to add a neodymium magnet to it as well. And also before you bolt that up, you just have to be careful when you're, when you're bolting it up. You don't want the magnet to be in the road of anything or stopping it from bolting up properly. And you don't want to have these magnets near any sensors or solenoids. The filter, let's make sure you've got the gasket on there. A little oops, a to it. and these also these uh, filters they do look similar but the way they actually measure is where that little fold is and how, how far from the pickup I think this one's 55 mil and you've got a 25 there's a 55 mil and a 25 mil where the fold is. That's how you distinguish it. All right, got it all back together. Just make sure you put that that arm or that bracket where it was, and you can also just use the uh, flange off the bolt as a witness mark where it went. Sometimes you need to just flex it a little bit. So filters on, uh, pans on. We've put neodymium magnet cork rubber gasket. We're putting in four litres to 
just try it, of the full synthetic multi tri-tech oil. And good idea is to just run a hose right down to the bottom. Easier to fill, otherwise you end up uh, getting an airlock there and it just keeps spitting it out. Even if you're doing it with a funnel, it takes ages to fill it up. And we'll just briefly start it. Go through the gears. We've got movement there, so we know we've got enough oil. And it's important to not overfill it. You got it on these, get them up to operating temperature and check the oil level with the motor running. Back from a drive and we check the oil level at operating temperature with the motor running it's just about halfway anyway hope that helps don't forget to like and subscribe any comments or questions put them in the section below and don't forget to throw us a beer if any of this information helps thank you for watching